It's a New Year's miracle! There's actually a good guy with a gun story that's getting an ounce of media attention. Besides the usual round of pro-gun conservative blogs and news outlets, there's even been a couple sightings of the story in AP and a couple NBC newsrooms. Of course, for every positive or even neutral mention, there are about a dozen politicos spitting out a dozen buzzwords per minute criticizing the good guy and his guns, but we'll get to that later. On Sunday morning, December 29th, Texas almost saw its second mass shooting in a church. But fortunately for the parishioners, the state had enacted a law to allow people to carry guns in church. That law had been a direct response to the Sutherland Springs shooting in November of 2017, and clearly it's already paid off. This most recent incident was caught on tape as the church was live streaming their Sunday morning services. The video has flooded social media, showing a confrontation that is only about six seconds long, start to finish, while the average police response time in the US is about 10 minutes. In the upper left-hand corner of the video, you see a man get up, pull a gun from his coat, and get out only two shots before being taken down by a church member. It's two shots too many, but the time between 10 minutes and 6 seconds could have been the difference between life and death for many, many more people. Even if the main hero of today's story hadn't gotten up in time, or had missed, by the 35 second mark of the video there were 6 to 7 armed parishioners at the scene ready for a double tap. Contrary to what anti-gunners like to claim would happen in an emergency situation, there was no crossfire, there was no mistaken identity shooting, and no collateral damage. Before I go on, in the spirit of today's episode, I want to give a quick shout out to USCCA. USCCA is a partner of the channel, and these types of situations are exactly what USCCA was created for. They offer legal and financial protection for gun owners in self-defense situations, as well as training with certified instructors for these types of situations. Though I don't think that today's hero has to worry much about that. To get hooked up with USCCA, you can click on the link down in the description, or text DOLL, that's D-O-L-L, to 87222. The man who saved the day was 71-year-old Jack Wilson, and he had his suspicions about the shooter immediately. He told the AP that he and several others had noticed the man early on in the service as he showed up in what looked like a wig, fake beard, long coat, and a hat. Wilson and a few others who volunteered as security stationed themselves around the room in order to keep an eye on him, because obviously walking into a church in a disguise is pretty shady. Wilson happened to be the first to react, and it's a good thing he did, as he saved the lives of nearly 250 people. The governor held a news conference that night praising Wilson and his swift action. He highlighted the Texas carry law and how it was pivotal in saving lives that day, and told the press that the security team's response will be studied and watched by law enforcement, private citizens, and churches, or anyone else who trains in their own security to see how lives can be saved. I think the key words on this one are private citizens and churches, or anyone else. Because there are plenty of people out there, including Michael Bloomberg, saying that even though Wilson and the other parishioners stepped up to save lives, they should have never had guns in the first place. Check out this clip. It may be true, I wasn't there, I don't know the facts, that somebody in the congregation had their own gun and killed the person who murdered two other people. But it's the job of law enforcement to uh, have guns and to decide when to shoot. You just do not want the average citizen carrying a gun in a crowded place. Notice that he's not talking about the people saved, or the fast response of Wilson or any of the other volunteers. He goes right to gun control and says that only cops should be able to save you in a life or death situation, even though law enforcement's primary responsibility is enforcing the law 
after a crime has already been committed. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is backed up by more than one federal court decision. Here's some food for thought. Gun control is supposed to stop these kind of events, right? The shooter has now been identified, and I won't be sharing his name, but I will share that according to the FBI, he had several arrests on his rap sheet. Here's a few of them in a tidy little timeline. In Arizona, he had several arrests for theft, disorderly conduct, and assault between 2003 and 2014. In 2008, he was hit with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. That deadly weapon was a firearm, but he pleaded down to a misdemeanor charge of deadly conduct and was sentenced to 90 days in jail. He had been charged with petite larceny in Vegas in 2011 and then was charged with aggravated assault and arson in Oklahoma that same year. For that, he was sentenced to a year in prison plus 90 days for misdemeanor assault and battery. In 2012, his ex-wife filed a restraining order against him. In her petition, she stated he was a religious fanatic and that he claimed to be battling a demon. Their son also told authorities that he was violent and on one occasion tried to get the kid to play catch with a football he'd set on fire. The order was granted for a period of three years. At this point, the Oklahoma Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services got involved, diagnosed him with depression and psychosis, and the courts ordered treatment. Wait, really? Yes, really! According to a 2013 report filed by the Oklahoma DMH, they remarked that his condition had vastly improved with treatment, but that if he stopped taking his medications, he could become dangerous. This report was filed in court. He was also arrested for theft of property in Texas in 2013 and did another jail stint. After that, he was arrested for unlawful possession of a weapon in 2016 in New Jersey. That weapon was again a firearm, but he pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of criminal trespass and was sentenced to time served. A criminal background check through the NICS system probably would have come up with a big, fat no. But, according to Wilson and the AP, his weapon of choice was a short-barreled 12-gauge shotgun. These are heavily regulated and in Texas can only be owned with a rubber stamp of approval from the ATF. I doubt that this guy was registered with the ATF, so here we have yet another case of a prohibited person with an illegal gun. And this is why gun control doesn't work, because those with intent to do harm always sidestep the law, or else they wouldn't be criminals. Instead of trying to claim that legal ease of access was the issue here, Newtown Action took to Twitter and tried to debunk the good guy with a gun argument by perpetuating an erroneous report that Wilson was an ex-FBI agent. They cited Fox, who cited CBS 11, who allegedly cited a witness, but her claim that he's ex-FBI is no longer in the article. In fact, I couldn't find a single article, aside from the Fox citing CBS citing no one article, that claimed he was FBI. Wilson is a firearms instructor who owned On-Target Firearms Training Academy before it burned down in 2016. He is also a deacon and a former reserve sheriff's deputy, but he's not law enforcement the way leftists mean it when they say only law enforcement should have guns, and as far as I can tell, he's definitely not FBI. Finally, I've seen several people claiming that Wilson should have chosen to shoot the guy in a leg or some other non-fatal body part, though I know leg wounds can be fatal. He told the AP he didn't have a clear window because of all the people jumping out of pews and trying to run away. He took the only shot he had, and it was a damn good one. So what, should he have waited for another shot that might never have become available while the shooter took more innocent lives? I don't think so. The bottom line here is that gun control fanatics don't care about the good guys with guns. They don't care about the millions of defensive gun uses per year, which is far higher than the number of homicides using guns. But Bloomberg and Moms Demand Action and the lefties on Twitter and on the news don't care about that. All they care about is people control, and you can't control the people if the people own guns.
That is your Second Amendment and firearm news for the day. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Drop a comment down below, have a little chat, as every interaction does help the channel and appeases the YouTube algorithm gods, who I'm sure are going to try and throttle this video. If you want to help support the channel in other ways, you can find me on Patreon and Subscribestar, check out my merch, or give a one-time donation through PayPal or my website. Until next time, thanks for watching, stay safe, and happy shooting.